jaguar is a special breed of cat, more powerful than a leopard and really wild. Jaguar is a special breed of car. I don't even know where we are. Where are we? We're in Somerset, Southwest okay. England. Okay, we're, we're in Somerset, Southwest England. And we just pulled up to this shop. I knew there was something special going on because they had an R34, Bayside Blue, parked outside, GTR. I'm like, okay, all right, they have some cool cars here. I was not prepared at all for what they had inside. This thing is crazy. First of all, introduce yourself. What's your name? I'm Charlie Seward. What is this? This and is your This shop? is my shop, body and paint shop. Charlie's Classic and Custom. And tell, tell me about this, this car. This, let's, let's go over So the E-Type, yeah, it's um, what started as a, a simple project, quickly got out of control. I could see that. I, I mean, just looking at it from out here, even though it doesn't have a body on it currently, because you had some racing incidents. Maybe? Yeah, yeah, we've been using it. We didn't, we didn't have it as a show car. We've yeah, been smashing good. it up. But that's the thing is, this is a usable car. This is a drift car. You built it to drift. To drift, that was its only purpose. Yeah, what we built it for. Unbelievable. Why did you decide to build an E-Type uh, we had the one JZ engine in stock sitting around and uh, the only rear wheel drive shell. <laughs> I lose, use the term loosely as a shell was an E-type in a chicken shed, which just started as we only had this center section here and a little bit through the back. So the car was snapped in half. There was no, no midsection. So we thought it was a crazy idea to start with and wasn't going to do it. And then when we realized we had no money to build anything else, and, but we could make things, we set about making all the new chassis structures, all the floors, front framework. And um, the initial idea was to almost sort of lash it together as a bit of fun, but it quickly got out of hand and we realized we were building something that was a bit more special. I can see that. So what do you do for your day-to-day -day operation? Like, what do you actually do for work? Day-to-day -day is restoration of, of, you know, old 60s cars or older and back to concourse condition. So here we've got uh, an Austin Healey, which is all finished now, ready to go back to the customer for him to put together. As it sits right now, it looks like a brand new car out of the factory. Yeah, there's probably, probably looking at around 1500 hours gone into it for the, for the metal work and the paint. Wow, 1,500 hours. I can't even, I mean, is it kind of a sentimental thing? Yes, this is actually quite a cool story with this one for the guy. He bought it, um, went on a blind date on the same day. Then two years later, ended up marrying the person who we went on the blind date with. They then went on their honeymoon around Italy in it. Then he's obviously stripped it down in, in 72 to, to rebuild it. And it's, it's never been on the road since. Very cool. So let's see what else you have going on here. Like what, what is this? This thing looks like it just got out of an acid bath. Yeah, this got chemically dipped and um, cleaned back. This is a 1969 Aston DBS V8. Oh, wow. You have a lot of work ahead of you, huh? <laughs> Incredible. So you made all of this all from, and yeah, we just from, from bare... Sheet, yeah, just from sheet, sheet steel that's over there. And uh, yeah, so we've got all new floors, all the floors have been made. Right the way I've cut, this was cut out right back into the center. Mm -hmm. All of that's new. So once I've got the structure back into the car, so it will hold itself, I'll take it off of the jig, put all the front on, which is more cosmetic than anything. This is all the metal that you've cut off, the rusty bits that you can't use anymore, huh? Yeah, that will all be going in the bin. Yeah, it already <laughs> looks like a, like a cheese like Swiss cheese up here, like amazing that you can actually bring this back to new. This is what I like the most, big projects, you know. Uh, most people, you can't bring it back or would think you can't bring it back, but I like, I like the big projects. But just looking through here, like look at that hole right there. 
I mean, you basically have to cut all of this off because yeah. you put made the new right. front end. At some points, would it be easier just to get a new chassis or just get a, a, oh, a better yes. version of it? It's personal preference of the customer at some times when they buy it. And also, if you buy a new chassis, if you're buying a completely new chassis, there's none of the original. So then you've got the argument of, is it a new car or is it a recreation or whatever? So it's, it gets tricky. But then where is the line of how much do you replace? Yeah to still call it original. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. How many man hours do you think you're gonna put into this? This one will be at 2,000 man hours to get this to the same stage as the Healy. I don't think I've spent 2,000 man hours on anything. I, I, I don't even, I couldn't even imagine working on the same project for that long. That is incredible, very It cool. takes some time. You have to have a few days off every now and then and go find something else to do because it drives you a little bit mad. But. I mean, because you don't stop there. You finish the chassis and then you also paint it. Then we do all the paint prep, yeah. So when this is the metalworks finished, you've got on top of that, you've then got another 350 hours of paint prep to a finished painted shell. So tell me about this other E-type chassis here. So this is going, this is a 1966 series one. It's going to be back to original sort of um, specs, original engine, gearbox, axle, but it's going to be based more on a fast road or like the ones that E-types that raced in Le Mans. Um, so it's got the Dunlop wheels, slightly wider arches. Well, this is going to be a really cool build. I can't wait to see this, but let's, let's go back to the drift car. Let's just, let's just kind of talk about this. So, of course, you had the engine laying around, yeah. as you were saying. But, like, how much power are you putting out? On this is, because the car needed so much work, we didn't put a lot of effort into the engine because we didn't know that it was going to work. There's no point spending loads of money on an engine, put it in, and it's a terrible drift car. There's no one you can ring to ask, what's the base setup for a 1J in a Series 1 E-Type? That's, it, it was the first one in the world. So, it's... It's a stock motor just with bolt-on, so it's only 420 horsepower, um, but you which, stuff, which right? was enough to, to get a feel of the car. But we've got plans. We've got a 2J that we're building to go in it with a, the ZRP stroker kit, so it'll be out to a 3.4. All the bells and whistles, nitrous, anti-lag, all the waffle. We've got a Cyvex, new Cyvex ECU, all new paint, a few different mods that we need to make to it to make it work a bit better. Um, so you're going to go for quadruple number? Yes. Horsepower. Yes. Yep. Yeah. We'd like to see over a thousand, which is 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 doable, as you know, with a with a two J. Wind it back a little bit for for drifting, but we're into the drag racing, so that's also oh. <laughs> a drag E type. Yes, I want to see that. I really want to see that. That'd we put it so into cool. obviously we're on an H pattern box with a clutch, so we've done eleven zero at the moment on it on the drag strip, which is it's which is good on street tires, but. Faster. You'd like to go from the 11s, miss the 10s, and maybe straight into the 9s. So would be potentially, nice. could that be the fastest E-Type? Well, it gets tricky because we don't have an E-Type engine. It depends who you I, ask on I the guess, day. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is great, though. So tell me about the rear fender. So this yeah, is this some is... this is some drift damage that you had. Yeah, this oh, wow. was um this was at Castle Coombe, which is our local circuit. So we um got it slightly wrong and put it sort of backwards, it was a glancing blow into the wall, I would say. But so, like I say, we built the car to use. We didn't build it as a show car. It's, it's only paint and metal, we can yeah. fix it all. It looks great though. So you actually formed these fenders yourself. Yeah, so these, to get them out so far, we had to bring it, start bringing it out from back here. So the light lens here, sh that should be an inch deep, that section of chrome. Mm -hmm. We've had to shave the light off because I started making the car wider right the way from the back and all the way around. But and then I wanted to make sure that the wing met the door. I didn't want it to come in like a bubble into the door. Yeah. So then I had to come out four and a half inches in a small bit of space um, to get enough clearance and then rolled wire edge around there so it can um, 
just have a little rub. It needed right. to fit, needed to fit. E-types have always struggled with fitment on the... When we said we were building an E-type and, and we wanted big wheels, they said, oh, what do you want? You know, like eight and a half inch by 16s. And we said, no, we want 10 inch by 18s. <laughs> they said, what kind of E-type is this? And we're like, Nothing that you've seen. So under here, we've got still the original Jag sort of rear section, boot floor. We shortened the boot floor by five inches to get the BMW M5 back end in. So you've got your um, methanol injection tank and then your fuel tank. So it, it has a BMW M5 Yeah, like at the V10, yeah, at the V10. So it's all aluminium subframe and then the um, 330D BMW gearbox. The bit that we really wanted to keep is making sure it had as much E-type on it as possible. So we put all the dash in, all the dials back as they would. It's, you know, it's quite unique for the E-types with the three wipers yeah. to get that all on there. We actually managed to make a, it's out of an A86, the uh, wiper motor that we managed to modify to make the linkage for, a, for the three wipers. All right, so tell me about the front and front suspension. Right, so the suspension's all we've designed and made ourselves to Jaguar's original double A arm. So we copied that because, you know, in some series you go in, you've got to be within original manufacturer. So we've made it double A arm, although we've moved them in slightly to get more steering lock. It's the same pickup points you're saying? Yeah, oh, uh, yes, but we brought them in slightly. So they're slightly tighter to allow the wheel to go around more, but essentially it's what Jag done, only it's our version of what Jag yeah, done. Um, they would have been on, on um, torsion arms as well and not coilovers. So they would have had a shock and then a torsion arm right back. So we could sort of bindle that off. With an E-type, the, the grille opening is really small. So we, and we didn't have space for an intercooler to fit in there. Um, so that's why we went for the PWR charge cooler, which is then pumped down to this front four pass rad. So it cools the water and then cools the air. And then you've got twin V-mount rads for the uh, engine coolant. Oh, I've never seen that before. <laughs> this is such a crazy triangle <laughs> that you guys created here. It's like, all right, first the air goes through here, then it goes out through the top. Yeah, and... so on the, on the back of this four pass rad for the charge cooler, we've got two um, spow fans, which are constantly drawn as soon as you turn the car on. And then we got another spow fan here and on the back of this one for the engine, which are obviously then into the Cyvex ECU, which will come on um, when it gets too hot, when you're giving it the it's, full it's, it's just so much, it's so much going on in such a small area yeah, here. The biggest challenge we found was the E-Type has space where other cars don't, but doesn't have space where other cars do. With all the framework, we couldn't fit a banana bunch manifold. There's too much of the framework, like on that one there, there's, there's nowhere we could put it. So we've come straight off, um, straight into one here and straight into the turbo, just because there was no room to go, which is, I think uh, Greddy done a, a setup like that years ago, but we, we made our own. This is really impressive. I, I love the cooling system here, what you've done. And then on top of that is the oil cooler. Yep. Okay. Uh -huh. Wow. Just unbelievable. I, th these are the kind of builds that I absolutely love. I just love the time, the dedication, and also th the reason why you built this is be not because you had too much money, it's because you didn't have enough. We had no money. <laughs> yeah, you had no money, but you, unlike a lot of people, you have the skill and you had an E-type laying around, at least just a chassis. A bit of a, yes, a part of an E-type. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for showing me this car. Not a problem. What a beautiful build. I'm sure there's loads I missed, but... It's a lot to take in, really. And this is kind yeah, of... Yeah, I mean, we could go on for hours and yeah, hours. You every put it up on a ramp and carry on. Every part of this car we've had to modify, make, change. Work it this, out. Yeah, I think yeah. possibly the only thing we haven't had to do something to is the door handles because they fitted, but we did go, and obviously uh, an old car like this should have a key in the door handle, but they only had it in the driver's side, so we managed to get two passenger side buttons, so we didn't have any keys on both sides. Just a little thing. <laughs> That's such a... <laughs> po pointless, but it made us happy. This is, this. you could have just put it in with a key, but no, 
you had to get two. Oh, that is just unbelievable. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you so much no for showing us this. Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, oh, holy crap. 